Now, joining us to, to continue our conversation about farming in America is Mark Baker from BakersGreenAcres.com. He is the Michigan pig farmer that we mentioned earlier. Mark, are you with us right now? I'm here, Mike. Thank you, Mark, for joining us today, man. It's great to hear from you. You're a very courageous American. Just want to give a quick background. You're uh, an Air Force veteran. You've been a farmer there for uh, in Michigan for, what, five or six years, something around that time? About eight. I got out of the service in 04. Okay. Uh, uh, eight years. Okay, I didn't know that. So on April 1, you were there at your farm thinking, oh, my goodness, the state is going to come murder, slaughter my herd. What actually happened that night before April 1 when that, that regulation was going to kick in? Well, uh, we got tipped off on Friday that they were coming, and I called my lawyer, and he made a few phone calls. And uh, Apparently, the attorney general in Michigan stepped in and said that there would not be any movement against us uh, until our court case is settled. So I had some reassurance, but I... There's a bit of a trust issue with these guys, so I moved my family off Saturday afternoon anyway, just as a precaution. And then I, I stood from 12 to to 12 the next day, uh, waiting, and uh, they didn't show. All right, so you could still be raided at any time under this invasive species order that the DNR in Michigan has actually put into place. Correct? They haven't. Yeah, I suppose so. I don't see any uh, any concrete block to keep them from from doing what they want to do. They've said they won't, or the attorney general has said that he's restrained them. But but isn't this like Obama signing the NDAA that 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 quote legalizes secret arrest and secret torture and detainment of American citizens, and then saying, "Well, I won't use it." Isn't that similar to what's really happening to you in Michigan? It's very similar. Very. Similar. So they, they want to claim they have this power over you, but then they, they, they say they will selectively restrain it in your case because you went public, you made a YouTube video, you have a family that it, it, it looks nice on, on YouTube. They don't want to uh, obviously be seen as, as you know raiding your farm, but what about all your other friends and neighbors and farmers? Are, are they uh, afraid of being raided? Uh, not only are they afraid of it, but they're being aggressively searched as we speak. Uh, DNR has shown up at a friend of ours, uh, Ron McKendrick, up in uh, Sheboygan, and um, <clears throat> tried to get on his farm to inspect it. What they're looking for is probable cause. And uh, he told them, no, get a warrant. Well, they came back the next day, and then they trespassed illegally. You know, they had uh, <clears throat> binoculars, and they were looking out into the onto his property to see if they could see something. And so they're surveilling his, his, his farm? Yeah, and then they, they parked down the road, uh, I guess, I'm told it was two trucks, and they were there for two days. <clears throat> you would think that they would have something better to do, to stake out actual terrorists, if you can even find any in America. You, you, wh how I suppose, but, you know, this is the DNR. They, they are supposed to be just uh, protecting the wild animals out in the woods and clearing trails and things like that. Well, let me ask you this, Mark. Well, first of all, let me give out your website, bakersgreenacres.com, for those who want to read your blog, who want to see your videos, your ongoing updates, and so on. But I want to ask you, as a United States Air Force veteran, someone who put your effort, your life, your time on the line to help protect America and its values and its freedoms, and now here you are being subjected to the threat of having your animals killed at gunpoint by the state in which you are a resident. How does that make you feel? I think it's a disgrace. Disgrace, and I, I think uh, the state government here should really be ashamed of what they're allowing to have happen to their citizens. It seems to me that it, there's got to be more to this also because it's not just that they're going to back off selectively in your case. That law is still on the books. Those bureaucrats have conspired to threaten you and destroy your property and put your lively, destroy your livelihood, in essence. Isn't that a crime, or shouldn't it be, a conspiracy to destroy the livelihood of, a, of an honest, hardworking farmer? Well, um, yeah, in reality it is. Uh, they've, they've leveled uh, a declaratory ruling at us that is, it is unconstitutional and therefore illegal. And um, we're duty-bound as American citizens to disobey orders that are illegal or unconstitutional, and then it's their responsibility to try and prosecute us. Um, 
in the prosecution phase, it'll be found out that the orders that they have leveled are unconstitutional. And then it will turn on them. And uh, the courts will will want to know what they are doing and why they are doing this. Are you planning on seeking justice through the legal system to hold those accountable in Michigan government who have conspired to destroy your livelihood and slaughter your animals? Yes, we are. We, uh, a group of us farmers have sued the Michigan DNR, and we probably go to court with them this summer sometime. Have you thought about civilly uh, filing a civil suit that names the specific individuals and attempting to hold them accountable? Yes, we have. We've we sued uh, Rodney Stokes, who is the director of the Michigan DNR. Will you please keep me posted on the updates on that, and I'll share that information with sure Kurt will. Nimmo and, and the entire InfoWars team. We want to see this is this is the thing, Mark. It is time for the American people, especially the farmers, to stop just laying down and taking it. And I don't mean escalating into violence. I mean using the court system, using the jury system for as long as we have it to take back the liberties, to hold these bureaucrats and these tyrants accountable when they violate the Constitution, when they violate our civil rights, and they put us in positions that leave us no other alternative but to seek redress. That's true, Mike. There's uh, several legal defense funds out there for farmers to use. We started off with the Farm to Consumer Legal Defense Fund, and um, they're the ones that got us going on this. And they're in place to protect the rights of farmers. But the farmers really have to know that a lot of this work they have to do on their own. And the first thing they have to do is, is think about resistance. You know, if, they're, if they're asked to do something that's unconstitutional, unfair, first they have to resist. And uh, like in, <clears throat> in our case here, uh, the DNR, if you tell them that they can't come on, there's really nothing more they can do than get a search warrant. And I think that if they go to the the judge, the county judge, and ask for a search warrant to search for illegal pigs. I, I think I don't think that's <laughs> going to go over very well. That's insane. But what we saw, what we've just reported on in other breaking news today, the the case with Andrew Wordies in Roswell, Georgia, the the bureaucrats there in that city, they kept pushing to try to just fabricate something or find something. They had their own culvert clogged up that ended up flooding his property to create a nuisance that they then charged him with having a nuisance property. It's, it's like once you're on their target list, they can invoke all these ridiculous rules and even, even create a situation where they can cite you for a violation and then throw you in jail for having that violation. Yeah, I guess so. But I, I think things are changing. I think Americans are getting set up and, like in our case, so people have said to me that, oh, you have a problem with the DNR. And I, I don't think that's the case. I think the DNR has a problem with me because we're not going to let up on this ever. You know, we're, we're just not going to let up. Um, they could do away with the declaratory ruling tomorrow, and we would still be on them to find out why this was done, who was behind it, you know, where the money goes. Um, we know that they're working with Michigan Pork Growers Association, which is the uh, concentrated animal feeding operation outfits that are here in Michigan. And uh, those guys definitely want more market share. And so they're, they're using the DNR to strong arm the small farms and put them out. Let me mention the Farm to Consumer Legal Defense Fund because they have done some excellent work in this area. Their website is ftcldf.org. It's obviously the acronym for their for their name, Farm to yeah. Consumer Legal Defense Fund. Uh, but it seems like Mark, what you're doing, and I, I really, I really love to see your courage in doing this. Is you are putting the the tyrants on notice, and I think that's what we have to do across America. Whether it's the farmers, whether it's the the milkman in California, whether it's the backyard chicken farmer in Georgia, whether it's the the front yard gardener in Oak Park, Michigan, we have to put the bureaucrats on notice and say we will not be trampled on any longer. We have the God given natural right to grow our own food and to not be interfered with and 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 oppressed by local government tyrants just because they're not into farming and food. That's right. Hey, and people got to remember first of all. They're American citizens. There's a lot that goes with being an American citizen. There's a lot of privileges with that. And then these guys that are trying to push these these unconstitutional laws down our throat, they have names, they have faces, they have careers, and they can be sued individually. 
and they will know that that's going to affect their life profoundly, just like they want to affect my life. I mean, they don't have a problem with, you know, doing away with half my farming operation. Yeah, well, so, they, they were going to put you out of business, basically, right. destroy your entire livelihood. Well, they've done it to uh, at least 70 Michigan farmers that have just just done away with their herds just because they were afraid. And I, I think that they don't know who they are in being an American citizen. They have the Constitution. And, you know, people, I've heard, uh, since this has started, I've heard people say, well, the government's just wipe, wiping themselves with the Constitution. Well, not if you don't let them. That's right. Your Fourth Amendment right is, is very clear, and uh, they cannot trespass on you, you know, unless they have well, a warrant or a probable cause. So, you seem like a very action-oriented individual, and I, I don't mean that in the, in the context of an escalation, just that you're willing to take a stand for the rights that you have been granted as an American citizen and those same rights uh, of which, uh, for which you have uh, donated your time to help protect as a, a, an Air Force active duty person. Uh, what is the sense there in Michigan, as you talk to others, is there a sense of people getting fed up and and... I don't want to say rising up because I don't, I don't want to imply an armed resistance. I just want to say people asserting their rights against the bureaucrats who are clearly out of control. Is that happening or are people giving up and surrendering and giving in and licking boots? Um, here in Michigan locally, there's more giving up than standing up. And that's sad. But Michigan, all right, I served in the military for 20 years and I served with a lot of people from different services that were from Michigan. And Michigan people are very hardcore people. They're hard workers, you know, fast runners, um, hard living people. But they are petrified of their government. And I, I come here to live. I'm from Massachusetts. I came here to live because this is my wife's home. And I'm just amazed at how how fearful these people are of their government. So I I can only assume that it's just been a lifelong operation of instilling fear in these people especially of the DNR. They're petrified of the DNR. Well, that's part of the tactic of government is to paint people as terrorists, to then run these giant screens in, in Walmart where you've got Janet Napolitano saying, be afraid of your neighbors, spy on your neighbors, watch what they do. If you see something, say something. Your, uh, your, your neighbor might be a terrorist. They might be planting a bomb. No, they're just, they just set their purse down on the table for a second. It's not a bomb, okay? Yeah. But they've trained, you're right, Mark, they've trained people to be afraid of each other. Uh, but across the country, Mike, now, that's a different story. There's lots of people that are standing up and they're saying that we are with you. And I don't mean like a hundred, I mean thousands. My inbox fills up ten times in the course of the day. And it's just one after another of support. There's only been like maybe a one-tenth of one percent that has had anything negative to say about it. And it's usually because they misunderstand the law. Right. And they, they haven't really looked into it. I'll tell you something about me. It's not the Air Force that put this patriotism in me. I'm from New England, and when I was a kid, I used to have to walk past a, a monument that told about a man named Nathan Howe that dropped his plow in the furrow to respond to the Lexington Alarm of April 18, 1776. And my grandfather used to tell me about that. And here was a guy that, that let his plow over to the side, and he went back to the farmhouse, probably got his gun if he, if he owned one or a pitchfork and then went to the Concord Bridge um, to help, to help. The, the alarm. Yeah, to uh, and, and that was a blockade against Boston. Um, the British had blockaded Boston and were allowing people out to get food only if they surrendered their firearms. Oh, really? Turn in your guns and we'll, and we'll give you food. Well, that give may be food. coming again in America. Well, it looks like they're trying to control our food, doesn't it? Yeah, that's pretty clear. That's pretty clear. Uh, no, no question about that. Well, look, uh, on March 16th, Obama seized control over all farms and food and seeds and, and tractors all across the country. You're, are you familiar with that executive order that was signed? I heard a little bit about that, yeah. Well, it's, it's right there in the language. It was covered here on InfoWars. I covered it as well. It, it's right there in plain language, and it's not some throwback to history. It's actually reactivated right now in peacetime. We've got to go to a break here, Mark, but okay. we'll continue with you on the other side of this break. Stay with us, folks. There's a lot more ahead here on the Alex Jones Show. This is Mike Adams, the Health Ranger, filling in today for Alex. Hope you're enjoying the show. We've got a lot more straight ahead. Stay with us. We've been focusing a lot of freedom 
issues related to farmers, food, and much more. The bigger picture, Mark Baker is joining us right now from bakersgreenacres.com in Michigan, which for some reason has been the hotbed of a lot of government assaults on individual liberties and rights. And I don't, I, I'm wondering what's in the water in Michigan, but I know it's probably fluoride. <laughs> what do you think, Mark? What, what do you think about your state? What's, why are they so tyrannical with everybody there? I don't know. It almost, it almost seems like Michigan is a place where they test things out. They try to see what they can do. Exactly what the people will take. Well, and as you said, most people are taking a lot. They're they're putting up with it. That see, it gives me hope. On one hand, to interview you, Mark, and to to hear your patriotism and your courage and your understanding of the key concepts of liberty. But then you tell me these things that that make me feel kind of down. That that, that a lot of people are are surrendering and giving in instead of, instead of standing up. I, that, that doesn't make me feel good. Well. Yeah, if we look back in history, though, like especially at the Revolution, there was there was really only twenty percent of the colonists that uh, resisted uh, King George, and then less than uh, less than two percent actually picked up arms. And it doesn't take a whole lot of people; it just depends on uh, you know the fervor that's in them. Well, you've hit upon it. That's exactly right. Uh, Alex says it all the time. Uh, a, a lot of people who are just sitting still doing nothing, they don't count. No. The, the, the revolution, as you say, was less than 5% of the population, and, and yet they won because they had it in their hearts. They had it in their spirit to protect their liberties. Like you, Mark, you're not just fighting for some legal precedent. You're fighting for your livelihood. You're fighting for your family, for your That's future. Right. That's right. And not just mine either, Mike, because uh, they're going after... Right now, it's it's heritage breeds of swine that they're going after, but they could just as easily say that certain types of beef are invasive species, or poultry that we like to grow out on pasture is invasive because it it hurts the wild birds, something like that. We've actually heard those rumblings. So, oh yeah, that's coming. But wasn't the the origin of this invasive species act? You actually explained this to me. Was was originally written by Michigan to prevent the the tankers, the big ships, coming into the lake and, and dumping their ballast water that was full of of ocean saltwater creatures that became invasive. Wasn't that the original intent behind the, the law? Yes, it was. And it's a good law. Uh, we really got to protect our natural resources. Everybody knows that. But to add farm animals onto an invasive species uh, order, it's just a little over the top, I think. Well, but here's where it's going, man. Here's what you want to know where it's really going, Mark, and all the listeners out there. They're going to label humans the invasive species. Yeah. That's what's coming. That's what was in depicted in Hunger Games that the people are the invaders, that all the land belongs to the kingship, yeah. and that humans are not allowed outside their zones. Yeah. Everything's a green zone. Yeah. And they take your land. I mean, th this is part of the story in in Roswell, Georgia, today. Well, let me ask you this, Mark. What what's ahead for you? What what's the next step? Well, I'm actually heading up to the Upper Peninsula today, and we're going to have a little strategy meeting with uh, a couple of the other farmers that have chosen to resist, and our our lawyers, and uh, just talk about what our next move is. Uh, there's going to be some depositions happening, and these people from the DNR, by name, will have to come in and explain the things that they have said. Um, these are people that have gone to college and then have made ludicrous statements about how biology works. <laughs> they don't know what a feral pig really is. Well, All yeah, right, well they do, we're, we're of, uh, but they, they've said these things, but now they're going to be held accountable in a deposition forum. All right, Mark, we're out of time. Oh. I want to thank you for joining us, though. Bakersgreenacres.com is the website where you can learn more about Mark and read his blog there. Stay with us here, folks. We'll be back with a lot more on The Alex Jones Show right after these messages. If you believe in this information and want to support its viral spread, go to the InfoWars store at InfoWars.com. We've got the new G.I. Joe InfoWars t-shirts. We've got the incredible ProPure gravity-fed filters available at InfoWars.com in the store. We've got a new DVD, Sign Us Under Attack, the Don't Tread on Me flag. We've got all sorts of different bumper stickers to help spread the rebellion virally. It's all there. Wristbands, citizen rule books in every order. Order online at InfoWars.com today. The water filters, the canteens, it's all there. InfoWars.com.